how long would we survive on each solar system planet? We're about to do an experiment to ascertain how much life would be available to a human being who, without any form of protection, would find himself magically catapulted to the surface of one of our solar system planets. And this could not be anything other than a thought experiment, since, as we're about to learn, in most cases, the unfortunate person would have so little time at his disposal that it would be impossible for him to let us know what is really going on. But before we move to the planets, it is perhaps worthwhile to have a clear understanding of the sequence of events that could lead to the death of a human being in the cosmic void, which is, after all, the most normal and dangerous environment among those that it is possible to encounter in space. So what would happen to our bodies if they were exposed to the cosmic vacuum without adequate protection, such as that normally used by astronauts during their historic moonwalks or extravehicular activities? Here, opinions differ, not least because it is reasonable to assume that no human being has ever been a guinea pig voluntarily exposing himself to the vacuum to dictate his impressions. However, it seems ascertained from plausible assessments, as well as from vile experiments conducted on animals, that death would not only not be instantaneous, but that the unfortunate person would lose consciousness within 20 or 30 seconds, more so because of the total lack of air. After that, the first thing that happens is that due to the high pressure difference between the outside and the inside of the body, the air contained in the lungs is forced out through the mouth, nose and ears, causing copious nosebleeds and tearing of eardrums. The lungs themselves may also be lacerated. And then there is the ebullition, or the violent boiling of a liquid when exposed to zero external pressure. This phenomenon consists of the formation of gas bubbles within body fluids. The vapor is capable of inflating the body to twice its normal size, yet the tissues are elastic and porous enough to prevent tearing. But why does this happen? Well, since elementary school, we're taught that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But this is true only at sea level. At 3,000 meters altitude, for example, it boils at 90 degrees, and at 12,000 meters, around 60. Well, in the vacuum, water would boil at any temperature, even at zero degrees. Because in such an environment, it cannot possibly exist in the liquid state. And water is known to be a fundamental component of the human body which, as most of us know, consists of about 70% of it. All this, mind you, does not mean that exposed to a vacuum, the body would immediately boil. However, moist body parts in direct contact with the outside world, such as the mucous membranes of the oral, nasal and visual systems, would be immediately affected. Saliva, consisting almost entirely of water, would immediately boil. And paradoxically, the instantaneous evaporation of moisture could also lead to the freezing of the mucous membranes, which would quickly go into dehydration. All this was literally experienced by Jim LeBlanc, a NASA engineer who in 1966 was testing a spacesuit in a large vacuum chamber in which the tube carrying the air broke. As Jim was passing out, he felt the saliva on his tongue boil. It took about 30 seconds to realize the problem and repressurize the chamber. As soon as he became conscious again, he had a sharp pain in his ears, similar to what we experience when we change altitude rapidly. The most curious effect, however, was that he had no taste sensation for a month. Another technician from a private company was in the absence of atmosphere for three full minutes and managed to survive after intensive care. In contrast, it is quite unlikely in the immediate term that ebulism would affect the circulatory system, even though blood is in fact salt water. Blood vessels, veins, and arteries are in fact elastic and very strong, and they are also protected by the epidermis covering the entire body, which itself acts as a kind of containment suit. Of course, after a minute or two, even the blood would be affected by this unsympathetic phenomenon, and the ebullition would lead to dilation of the vessels due to the formation of vapor within them. At this point, the circulation would be irreparably impaired, and cardiovascular collapse would soon ensue. I doubt, however, that we would reach this stage, as we would be long dead by now from asphyxia, which is lack of air, and hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen to the brain. Another belief that needs to be debunked is that of an alleged very rapid death due to extreme temperatures present in the vacuum. First of all, it must be remembered that the vacuum is the best thermal insulator known, and it is not for nothing that thermos exploit this principle. Consequently, in the total absence of air, solar heat can propagate only by radiation and not by convection as on Earth. 
Radiation is a transfer of energy that occurs through electromagnetic waves and does not need a propagating medium. The spacesuits are covered with very light material and the time taken to reach high temperatures due to irradiation would take several hours, if not days. To summarize, if an astronaut should be aware that he is exposed to the cosmic vacuum or is aware of an impending rupture of his suit, he should first throw out all the air from his lungs, keeping his mouth wide open to facilitate its escape. Strongly tart his ear canals with his thumbs to prevent or at least limit the decompensation that would occur in the inner ear, thus avoiding possible damage to the eardrums and close his eyes as tightly as possible so as not to dehydrate them. If, with these precautions, the sufferer is rescued promptly, say within a minute, likely he or she will not suffer any damage. Rest assured then, death in open space would be neither instantaneous nor even spectacular. As some movie directors in a mood to astound audiences with special effects that often do not reflect the reality of the facts would like. Contrary to what one might think, much, but much worse would be the case in the planetary environment, where the possible vacuum condition on the planets without an atmosphere is usually accompanied by insidious dangers of another nature. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Let us start with the planet closest to the Sun, Mercury. It is the smallest in the solar system, and for this reason does not have sufficient gravitational force to hold an atmosphere. It rotates slowly on itself, in about 58 days relative to the stars. But the entire Mercurian day lasts 176 Earth days, so that the section of the planet facing towards the Sun reaches temperatures approaching 428 degrees Celsius, while the other reaches minus 180. By following the terminator, that is the line separating the illuminated and shaded areas, it would be possible to find less deadly temperatures. But unfortunately, the absence of an atmosphere prevents on Mercury the homogeneous distribution of heat between the illuminated and dark hemispheres, so that the temperature range still remains very high. And if it is not the heat or the cold or both together that will kill you in seconds, it will be the lack of oxygen or the absence of atmospheric pressure since your body will react in the same way described in the case of exposure to the cosmic vacuum. In short, on Mercury there will be three knives that will kill you, and only an autopsy could tell which one will have struck you first. In any case, it will end with an Amen. Life expectancy, three seconds. Venus, the planet of love. Unlike Mercury, there is also too much atmospheric pressure on Venus even equivalent to that which would be measured in a terrestrial ocean at a depth of a thousand meters. And under those conditions, only the protection of a bathyscaphe could keep you from instantly being turned into a hamburger. But it's not just that. The presence of such a dense atmosphere, the resulting greenhouse effect, and the winds that at altitude circle the planet in a few hours are all factors that cause the temperature on the ground to be 460 degrees Celsius, and everywhere on the planet, even in the unlit hemisphere which would instantly reduce you to a charred hamburger. Then there is the fact that Venus' atmosphere is extremely poisonous, being composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide. But that would be the least of your problems, because you would not even have time to fill your lungs before you would already be dead, crushed and calcified. Life expectancy, half a second. Mars, familiar but still deadly. Although it is known as Earth's twin planet, the surface conditions are quite treacherous. Mars is full of deserts, is extremely cold, and has very little atmosphere. The most serious immediate impact would be that of atmospheric pressure, which is virtually the same as in the cosmic vacuum. That is, well below the so-called Armstrong limit, which is the minimum pressure below which the boiling temperature of liquids becomes so low as to be equal to that of the human body. Basically on Mars, all bodily fluids such as mucus, saliva and sweat, and lastly blood, would begin to boil and evaporate, with the consequences we have already described. Of course, you would not be able to breathe in the meantime, while the cold might be the least of your problems. In fact, Martian temperatures range between 20 degrees Celsius and minus 140, and by choosing the right place near the equator, you might even survive for quite a while. Life expectancy? Maybe a whole minute. Jupiter, the king of the gas giants. Jupiter is literally just a ball of gas, so there is nothing to land on. If someone were to dump you with the right speed and direction from the hatch of a spaceship, you would simply begin to fall into nothingness. 
On Jupiter, it would not be atmospheric pressure that would kill you. The gases indeed get denser and denser as you descend, but at about 100 kilometers below the outer cloud cover, the pressure would still be bearable, equal to that of a sea depth of about 100 meters. Even the temperature, which gets higher and higher, will not bother you in time. What will kill you long before you reach that altitude will simply be the lack of oxygen. But there will also be the possibility that you will turn into a shooting star, burned out by the friction of an increasingly dense atmosphere. Who knows? Prospect of life, 30 seconds. Or a hundredth of a second if, on the other hand, your intention is not to face freefall, but to materialize near the metallic rocky core, where there is unimaginable pressure. Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. The result is the same. For the other gas giants, roughly the same applies as with Jupiter. Whether you prefer to jump headlong through its atmosphere, or whether you want to try to rest your feet on something solid, death will seize you either by suffocation or crushing in very few seconds. Titan, a moon of Saturn. From the standpoint of our thought experiment, the only interesting object in our outer solar system might be Titan, Saturn's largest satellite. Titan is covered by a thick atmospheric blanket, so much so that the pressure on the ground is 50% higher than that on Earth. Quite acceptable then. The problems begin with temperatures, which over the entire surface, even in the hemisphere facing the Sun, on Titan are consistently below minus 180 degrees Celsius. And they continue with the impossibility of breathing its atmosphere, composed mainly of nitrogen with a small part of methane. No oxygen then. And the question at that point is, will you freeze to death first or suffocate? No one knows, but it is still estimated that for one reason or another, you will be destined to die in no more than 30 seconds. One could go on and imagine descending to Pluto or to Eris on the periphery of our known solar system, but the result would not change. The universe was not made for us creatures of planet Earth, and wherever we go, we will carry with us eternal awareness of our fragility.